Can you see that Biatches? There you go. That's the um, Sackville Park Beacon of Hope, and it's the beacon of hope for uh, anyone who's lived or died with HIV um, or HIV related things, or people being remembered for that. It's a kind of, it's, it's a beautiful, I mean, I think it looks like a lot of tins of beans stuck together, but it has a kind of beauty which is its own stark kind of brutal simplicity. Um, but I'm here because I just want to talk about um, about that really. Um, in the same park, there's a uh, there's a statue to uh, Choran, and it's um, and, and that was a gay who long before AIDS was uh, chemically castrated by the society that largely, not wholly, by the society we live in now. Not everybody's changed, and certainly the Tory Party hasn't changed. Well, in my opinion, hasn't changed. I think on the surface, it's got a lovely little sheen, rather like this. Uh, thing it's got a nice little sheen on the surface but underneath it's a really dark and uh, cruel past and I think of, and I think of I even think of the AIDS uh, uh, template as that really it's it's we've made it quite shiny-ish now that's only because of great medicines and stuff like that but it has a dark and cruel past now let's talk about that um, now I remember at the height of the AIDS crisis um, my friend was dying and it, I don't know if you've seen an AIDS death I mean the, the they're a hideous way to die. I mean, not only physically, it's not just—it's not a physical death. It's much more than a physical death. It, I mean, that sounds kind of poetic and, and dramatic, but it's also a mental death. I mean, especially when a lot of young men were dying, a lot of young men saying goodbye not only to youth, but to the freedoms of a of a burgeoning gay scene, which AIDS didn't diminish, which I'm pretty sure the Tory Party wished it had, and I think it tried its best to in the middle of all that. So, me and my friend, we'd be. Um, I don't know, I, it's a very long goodbye in AIDS now. Uh, it sounds like, it's like an eternity, a uh, very painful, excruciating eternity. And um, uh, it's about kind of understanding that, understanding that actually, in, the, in that sense. It's about understanding what that actually meant and why it was about and why we, and how we did it. I still don't know how we did it. I still think it's a kind of minor miracle, for, major miracle for the gays. But we would sit up all night, um, often all night because he couldn't sleep because he was in such discomfort and quite often our conversations would turn to clause 28 often it would because you know it'd been implemented and and suddenly there it was in the middle of this in this field this this killing field of dying of and not just dying i mean i've said before agonizing excruciating painful death the tories came in with clause 28 and now i don't know about you but i think that's probably the cruelest thing um, I've ever known, I've ever, I've ever, I, I, it's, it's probably the cruelest thing I've ever had the, the historical political nouns to witness. It, and, and, and if everyone thinks that Clause 28 just, Clause 28 just impacted on um, schools, you know, that we shouldn't be taught homosexuality, it didn't. It actually impacted, it, it, it impacted on the mental health of our friends who were dead and who were dying and would soon be dead. Um, I think it was a particularly cruel uh, vicious legislation um, and also I think what I'm trying to say is after all that cruelty I don't think the Tory party has changed that much yes of course Cameron gave us gay marriage but anyone I mean Donald Duck would have, would have had to have given us gay marriage by then and I think Donald Duck would have done it with a, with a, lot, more, with a lot more ease and kindness but we were winning you know we were whoever's pre, whoever was premier their hands were tied they had to give us gay marriage we'd won we'd, we'd even through all the horror, we'd still want, we'd still want something. Um, so, I, I can't. I, I, what I'm saying is, I, of course, I'm not saying don't vote. Whatever, don't vote uh, uh, late. I'm, I'm not, no, shut up, Jerry. What I'm saying is, you can vote whatever you want. I'm, I'm not saying vote late because I vote late. But I'm, I am kind of saying, on a on a very emotional, not not political or intellectual, level, on an emotional level, not to demean, diminish, devalue the memories of your ancestors by voting Tory, because vote the Tories. And they're still there, that guy the other, the other week or last week who said, you know, gays are the worst thing ever or something, and, and it was all over the place. They're still there. They haven't gone away. And, and they've taken things away. I remember when people were ill, they were really ill. They had, certainly in the, in the 90s, late 80s, it was certainly the 90s, they had homes, they had uh, benefits which kept them reasonably in comfort and they had a national health service which was working uh, very soon we won't have a national health service which is working um imagine if aids was going to happen now we'd be so ill prepared for it and do you know why seven years of austerity don't vote tory don't diminish 
the memory of your ancestors. Don't demean or devalue them. Now that sounds a little bit um, harsh, maybe, if you are going to vote Tory or a natural Tory voter. But if, if you knew anyone who went through all that crap, why would you?